Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I just thought I'd talk for a moment or two about uh, the old time rituals, black magic rituals of, of blood sacrifice and scapegoating to, expiating, to expiate for the sins of a group, okay? Uh, so it's been a popular practice in years past, and it's this, this practice, the energy of this practice, or both these practices, is in direct opposition to the ascension energy and the new light that's coming in. And so these old patterns of behavior are coming up to be looked at and hopefully set aside, okay, as part of the, as part of the disclosure process ongoing in groups and uh, especially groups in the world today. Um, sometimes people can get away with things by just disclosing them to themselves, you know, unless they're people that are very much in the public eye, in which case they always run into the danger of, you know, group ostracism and group condemnation and when, when disclosure happens. But most people can get by just with disclosing the uh, discords in their bodies of light to themselves and old energy patterns that no longer fit and just releasing them. However, groups are a different matter. Now, the Catholic Church recently um, went through a big process of, of disclosure and, and ch change up to, to try to make their policies more in line with the spirit of Christianity. And I see that kind of thing happening in every group all across the world. Ha! Huh. To get back to blood sacrifice and scapegoating to expiate the sins of the group. Uh, on the Clare Plain, what I've run into is a practice of blood sacrifice. Um, it, you know, I don't really know how it got started. Maybe, maybe in the Mayan culture and other Stone Age, or after the Stone Age cultures, sorry. Uh, when, yeah, when they the when spring happened and life resurrected on Earth, and they thought that, that for some reason they thought that the the blood of a, an innocent child would would help the crops to grow. I don't know where that came from. Couldn't have been anything good, <laughs> but the practice has persisted, and right now it's it's coming to the forefront. Um, some kind of a notion that 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 one person in a group can go out and and kill people and uh, cause um, cause a, a satanic contract to take place so that another person is bound down uh, to the Satan world, an innocent person. Uh, what's with that? I wonder. <laughs> I mean, where's the logic in that? Or let's say they want to bind down a person who's not innocent, who has wronged them to the Satan world. Well, is that person not already bound down if they've participated in wrong? You know, the, in other words, the, the light in our, in our uh, body of light field is the thing that determines our quality of life. So in the case of somebody that wants to injure someone else or seek a vengeance and so commits blood sacrifice to persuade Satan to damage someone else, that person <clears throat> is injuring the light body of the person they kill, the sacrificial victim. They're injuring their own light body by killing. Uh, they're injuring the light body of the person they want to seek vengeance upon with their thought forms, you know, with their negative thought forms, which are projected energy. And uh, everybody loses, do they not? I mean, what's the percentage in that? So, so if your group is doing that, just take a look. Think about it. Think about the logic. Think about the light. Think about the situation, how it has changed in the world today. So the next, uh, the last uh, instance I want to talk about is scapegoating um, for um, for the group. So there is this practice in the world today 
to, um, to find members of the group that don't quite fit the norm and to cast them out, ostracize them. And, and it, it can be taken to lengthy extremes by taking two members of a group that don't fit in and um, telling one member that, that it's their job as a member of the group to persecute the other member on the psychic plane or physically to kill them. And so, and so then when the act is accomplished to, and the person who has uh, persecuted psychically or killed comes back, then the, the de rigueur thing to do is to say that this person is no longer worthy of being with the group. Now, in truth, what has happened to that person is that their astral matter has become less refined, has become more coarse because of the actions of vengeance that they pursued in the name of the, the group that they, um, they feel an affinity for. And so the truth is that they do not fit the group, most likely, and did not fit the group in the first place. So... Um, just, uh, you know, in the extreme instance that I've run into recently, uh, a group, say a very spiritual group on the Clare Plain, I, this is my intel on the Clare Plain, might find somebody that, that, that they no longer want in the group, and the sca scapegoating process goes like this. A bunch of them will gather around that person, and through the power of Satan, mind control that person into unconscious, in an unconscious state. Then, uh, in that state, they will, they will actually take that person's life. And the, the Claire subconscious agenda is, to, is that they should sacrifice this, this person, this, uh, this, this blood sacrifice should satiate or appease Satan in the de dimmest, deepest realms of the underworld so that Satan will then go easy on their members who are, who are, for reasons unknown, or maybe I should say because of vengeance and blood sacrifice and scapegoating, finding themselves after they pass on down there in the sixth and seventh levels of hell. Okay, so um, first I'd like to say, what is the percentage in making the deal with the devil? Just, just dreams have been written on this. You know, songs have been sung. And the consensus is that a deal with the devil, devil never benefits anybody except the devil. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line for a devil deal. It will do humanity no good, you know? So, so my guess is if you have members of your group that are in the sixth and seventh levels of hell, the very best thing you can do is chant God's name or say the Our Father or, or do some spiritual practice uh, uh, visualization to uplift those people to the higher heavenly uh, astral realms. Blood sacrifice won't do it. What it will do, though, is it will assure that the other members of your group still living descend to the sixth and lev seventh levels of hell after they pass on. So, so think about it. The scapegoat who has been sent down the hell is easily turned upward because he was blameless in all this. You know, he was just a person that wanted to be a spiritual person and didn't come up to snuff. But so, and so those who care about people like that can easily lift them up to the higher levels of the astral realm. But what can we do for a person who believes that he's right in his actions to injure other human beings? This is one universe, one universe. This is, this is one humanity here on earth. This is one planet, okay? It's not us against them. It's us all together rising up in the great symphony of new creation. So just, you know, it's a little bit heavy, but, you know, it's a little bit heavy energy what I'm talking about, right? And it's a little bit heavy of a response. These things are worth thinking about because that's what's in the air right now. That's what's coming up. So I'm wishing you the very best in your soul and group reviews and in your, in your change-ups and, and discoveries. Uh, so take care. <laughs>